Hey, how's it going? Today we begin the first letter to the Thessalonians. So we are in Thessalonians chapter 1. We'll read verses 1 through 10, which is the whole chapter. Paul, Silas, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace to you. We always thank God for all of you mentioning you in our prayers. We continually remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers loved by God, that He has chosen you, because our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit, and with deep conviction. You know how we lived among you for your sake. You became imitators of us and of the Lord in spite of severe suffering. You welcomed the message with the joy given by the Holy Spirit, and so you became a model to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. The Lord's message rang out from you not only in Macedonia and Achaia. Your faith in God has become known everywhere. Therefore, we do not need to say anything about it, for they themselves report what kind of reception you gave us. They tell how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for His Son from heaven, whom He raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath. Doesn't that sound wonderful? Sounds so nice. Uh, this letter... You know, it's not just from Paul, Paul, Silas, and Timothy. So that's an interesting start. It's not just from one person to, uh, to the church in Thessalonica, but from Paul, Silas, and Timothy. Uh, everybody sort of assumes that Paul is the one who wrote it, but, you know, they're standing together uh, for that, uh, to write this. And Paul is the primary, uh, probably, speaker. He was probably dictating, and this was written down. Um, then, uh, boy, doesn't this sound good. All these awesome things. They did such a great job, the Thessalonians, you know, and, and Paul is talking about all the great things that happened. Uh, there is a little bit of a uh, talk of suffering in there. And I just want to set the stage here. So this is the church in Thessalonica. I want to go to Acts chapter 17 and uh, look at the situation. So in chapter 2, it kind of talks of Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians, sort of describes more of the difficulties that they went through. But I want to read Acts 17, 1 through 9, and then 13 through 15, just to give us the context of what's going on when this letter is being written to the Thessalonians. When they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, there were uh, where there was a Jewish synagogue. As his custom was, Paul went into the synagogue, and on three Sabbath days he reasoned with them from the Scriptures, explaining and proving that the Christ had to suffer and rise from the dead. This Jesus I am proclaiming to you is the Christ, he said. Some of the Jews were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas, as did a large number of God-fearing Greeks and not a few prominent women. But the Jews were jealous, so they rounded up some bad characters from the marketplace, formed a mob, and started a riot in the city. They rushed to Jason's house in search of Paul and Silas in order to bring them out to the crowd. But when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some other brothers before the city officials, shouting, These men who have caused trouble all over the world have now come here, and Jason has welcomed them into his house. They are all defying Caesar's decrees, saying that there is another king, one called Jesus. When they heard this, the crowd and the city officials were thrown into turmoil. They made Jason and the others post bond and let them go. And then jumping to verse 13. When the Jews in Thessalonica learned that Paul was preaching the word of God at Berea, they went there too, agitating the crowds and stirring them up. The brothers immediately sent Paul to the coast, but Silas and Timothy stayed at Berea. The men who escorted Paul brought him to Athens and then left with instructions for Silas and Timothy to join him as soon as possible. So basically, Paul and is, is kicked out of Thessalonica. Then he goes to Berea. He's kicked out of Berea. He goes to Athens. And it's in Athens when he's writing 1 Thessalonians. And so there's 
these difficulties. And this and uh, Thessalonica was the pr- place he went after Philippi, which is where Paul and Silas are in the inner cell and they're severely flogged and then, uh, you know, a big miracle happens. But I mean, it's a lot of hardships here. There's the, the flogging in the inner cell in Philippi, then they go to Thessalonica, they spend three consecutive Saturdays uh, talking in the synagogue, and that seems to be going well, but then there's a big riot, they have to flee, they go to Berea, it's going well there, but then there's a, another riot there, and they got to flee again, and so Paul is just running all over the place. So, the first part of, you know, First Thessalonians, this first chapter, it sounds so nice, you know, all these positive things being said, and I just want to make sure to emphasize Don't think because someone's talking about the positives that there aren't hardships and difficulties, that there aren't negatives as well. There's usually both. Uh, And there can be something that uh, I can, I call testimony syndrome. And that is when you, you hear the testimony of the great things that God has done and you think, wow, how come stuff like that doesn't happen for me? Well, there's a whole lot to those testimonies. Sometimes it's many years, that testimony in the making. Um, There's usually so many other things involved that just a short testimony can't explain it all. And so as we conclude today's uh, devotion, I want to pray that we would have the wisdom to see the whole truth and the the maturity to be thankful for the good things. So we want wisdom to be able to see the whole thing. Everything isn't simple and easy and perfect. It wasn't simple and easy and perfect here. It isn't in our lives, but we can have the maturity to see the good things and be thankful uh, while we're aware of what all is going on. So let's pray along those lines. Heavenly Father, help us not to have a one-dimensional view of what it means to walk with you, or even as we read the scriptures and the experiences that the believers had back then, Lord, let us not have just a one-dimensional, super simplistic understanding of how it goes, but Lord, let us see the whole truth, the, the trials as well as the victories. Let us see the the disappointments, as well as the joys. Let us understand the whole process so that we can, as we live our lives and we experience all the things, that we can uh, still walk by faith, trusting in you. So Lord, give us the wisdom to see the whole truth, to put the whole picture together, but give us the spiritual maturity to be thankful for all of the good things along the way. So Lord, bless us with this. In Jesus' name, amen.